Hi guys and welcome to yet another review. This time I bring you the IVPIQ V11. Uh, before I carry on with the review, I just want to apologize. Uh, I had a few requests for this IEM and I delayed myself in doing it. So my sincere apologies to those people that did ask me to do it. Anyway, let's get into it so that, that I don't, uh, you know, the, the pitchforks and so on don't come out and uh, I get chased to death. Uh, V11, uh, another IEM from IVPIQ, part of the Conch series. Uh, comprised of the V11, which is an 8BA, the V12, which is a 2 plus 6, and the V13, which is a 2 plus 2. Um, as for the V11, uh, 8BA, as I mentioned, uh, worth mentioning that the base BAs are Sonium 38D1Xs, uh, and that is very much noticeable when you actually hear the IEM. Uh, the base does have that mm, typical uh, Sonium timbre, and tonality if um, if you are well if you will be more experienced you will understand what i'm saying those that of you would are not as experienced will probably uh, not understand and think that maybe i'm just um, painting a, a false picture but it's true um you know you can those of us that are a little bit more experienced uh, and and so used to listening to uh, a lot of BAs and uh, IEMs and so on, you will pick up on something which is using a Sonian and something which is using a Knowles, uh, because they just have uh, they just have their own tonality, their own sound, and especially the 38 D One X, which is a a monster when it comes to bass. It's it's there's a reason why it's used in many iems as uh, as an i uh, as, as the ba of choice when it comes for the lower frequencies our audio neon pro uh, the leisurely audio l8s um and and countless others i mean i'm not gonna now say all of them um anyway in terms of its accessories this is the stock cable that it brings okay so it's a nice cable would be expected ivpiq the build of the iem is faultless there's really nothing to say very nice resin shell um, you know, you can see inside everything is being done with a lot of care. Very, uh, uh, there's attention to detail, although the shell is a very kind of common shell, nothing, uh, you know, nothing unusual. But it's it's a good quality shell. It's got a good uh, shine to it. Uh, you can see it's 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 been well done and it fits beautifully. Nothing wrong with the fit. It's non fatiguing in the fit. So in terms of its hardware, let's put it this way. The V11, much like the V12 and the V13, uh, scores full points. Nothing to be said there. Uh, with regards to the accessories, then yes, then that's where uh, I want to kind of, well, not give IVPIQ a hard time, but they need to improve that. If they really want to become competitive, because, I mean, this is an IM that will cost anywhere between $270 and $300, depending on which part of the world you are. Uh, myself being in Europe, this costs me $300. Okay, some of you will obviously get it cheaper. Uh, irrespective of, of that, the truth is, you know, you when you're paying that kind of money, you want not only a nice cable, but you want good tips. Okay, you want a decent case, which fine, okay, it's a decent case. They could have maybe changed the color, made it a little bit more conducive to the actual IEM itself. Uh, but it needs a nice packaging. It needs to be eye candy. You need to look at it when you get the box and be impressed. Okay. Uh, so that's an area where I think IVPIQ needs to consider uh, some some improvements. And as for the IM itself, I mean, I personally have nothing to say about the appearance that it has. It looks fine, but it would be nice. It would be nice if perhaps uh, either a, a customization was available. Okay, uh, I, I can accept a little small extra cost, much like a EPZ offers. So you 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 customize it and you have it. Uh, finished with your personal taste or like sound Giant as well also offers that ability okay so that would be nice uh, and that's it what do i have here to compare with the the the, the, the v11 i've got here the cvj kumo also an 8ba it's got tuning switches uh, i'm using it in the 1000 setting which is basically the one that just boosts the, the bass a little bit and leaves the rest of the frequency range as it is Metal shell uh, costs around $180. Uh, if I have to compare it in terms of accessories and look, it's it's better than than the the, the V11. It brings a, a, a you know a modular cable. A cable is also a very decent cable. It brings some tips, although the tips are not anything special. It doesn't bring a carrying case, but there's a hundred dollar difference here, and it's it's in terms of the accessories, 
it's it's uh, um, it's well done. Um, Kiwi ears, orchestra light, around two hundred and forty dollar price bracket. This is not the stock cable. This is not the original cable. The original cable is is not exactly the ideal. Also an ABA. It's using uh, what what seems to be Knowles. Uh, BAs inside not all of them I think are Knowles, but uh, the base ones at least are 22 955s um, And much like the CVJ although the CVJ has been tuned a little bit differently You can pick up on that 22 955 base. I know it's strange for me to say this But you know like I said when you're so used to listening to IEMs and you've heard so many you you start being able to pick up on these small things the um, so that's it okay and then finally on this corner yeah the leisurely audio the l8s around 360 dollars so you know more or less the same price as this um brings a decent enough case i guess the tips are also acceptable the cable is also an acceptable cable it's a pretty pretty decent cable as you can see well i'm actually got here to be honest i've actually got yeah, the jazir cable but the the stock cable is exactly the same the difference is only on the, the the actual termination here which is different and it's 3.5 i i wanted a 4.4 so that's why i changed it to the jazir cable but the cable itself of the leisurely is the same as the jazir cable the actual you know cores everything's the same um so in terms of the accessories and the cabling and so on it's also pretty decent what is then the, the other thing that's not noteworthy of, of mentioning it also uses sonian a combination of Sonyan and Knowles, okay, and it has the Sonyans, the 38D1X is on the base side as well. And once more, you notice that base there, okay. Um, how can I just then, without prolonging this review forever, characterize the sound of the, the V11? The V11 has got a neutral sound with a mega bass boost, let's put it that way. Um, I know it sounds weird, probably never heard anybody say this, but that's exactly it. Fair enough, the boosted bass that exists uh, is not as much and is not as aggressive as you would possibly think, but the mids, the upper mids and the treble are as smooth as you can possibly imagine. And when I show you the graphs in a minute, you will understand. It is smooth, 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 smooth. And were it not for the monstrous amounts of bass, and that's perhaps the only criticism, 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 that I make on the V11 is it should have had a bass switch because if it had a bass switch that would turn down the bass 3-4 dBs so that when you are listening to something which is more vocal centric or you listen to some uh, orchestral stuff or some uh, classical stuff it would allow those mids and upper mids and, and treble to shine this would be one of the best BA or BA sets out there without question that is the only thing that is truly holding back the um, the V11. Um, bass is in insanely good. You know, the only other BA or all BA set that kind of gives you this sort of intensity is uh, the um, uh, the Panon Turbo uh, with the bass switches all you know with a turbo switch all on and the bass on and so on then you get the same kind of balance between the bass and the mids and it's, it's insanely it's ridiculous as well so crazy for electronic music and and that kind of stuff you know edm uh, um, uh, rap insane insane over here uh, it is not to that extreme of the of the turbo um so it ends up being more balanced so what that means is that if in the turbo well, the turbo also has the tuning switches which allow it to be tamed down but if, if the turbo only was turbo all the time then it would be a very limited IEM in terms of its capabilities of playing music because this has been tamed down and is not uh, as focused on the bass as the turbo then this yes does have a, a reasonable variety of music that it will be able to play decently focus yeah definitely will be on things which have a, a lot of bass so edm music it plays it beautifully uh if it's um, uh, music which is vocal centric if you like female vocals mm, uh, if there's a bit of bass information there it will be over emphasized and can maybe camouflage that that vocal uh, that female vocal uh, male vocals sound for the most part very nice okay very much very nice only excessively 
warm when the actual song does have already a, a, a boosted low end, let's put it that way. But for the most part, I actually think the male vocals come across better than the female vocals because of this boost on the bass that you have. Um, timbre and tonality is not perfect um, because of the boosted bass. It's not bad with certain instruments, but then with other instruments, it lacks that twinkle, that 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 twang, that that you know. So it a guitar will sound overly thick, uh, a piano will sound overly thick. That's the problem. But does it bug me to the point where I find it boring? Or no, it doesn't. But it's not it's not correct. It's definitely on the colored side. Uh, Obviously, then things like soundstage and, 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 and imaging are also being affected by the amount of bass that you have here, but not as much as you would think. I was actually quite surprised. I was thinking it was going to be worse, but it actually ended up being quite decent. And imaging was pretty decent. The resolution was pretty good, considering the amount of bass that you have. Um, and uh, uh, in the detail retrieval as well was not bad. It was acceptable. On the positive side of all of these apparent negatives, oops, sorry, on the positive side of all these apparent negatives that I've just given, it, does, it doesn't have any BA timbre, at least none that I perceived that in that way, because the amount of bass that it has is, is, is so full that it completely just smooths out any BA timbre that you, that you might pick up on the mids and on the highs, okay? It, I didn't, it doesn't exist. There's no sibilance, there's no nothing. It sounds, you know, um, to be, uh, maybe not the ideal, what I'm going to say, but this sounds uh, like a really bassy uh, single DD. That, that's what I'm going to say. But it's a single DD that does have certain characteristics of a BA, which are, it does have a quick bass. It's quick, it's impactful, but it's quick. It's, it doesn't linger too long. Um, if it was a DD with this amount of bass, I think it would be, um, if it was not a quality DD, it would be just too much. It would be muddy. There, would, there wouldn't be any resolution. So it does, re it does remain uh, having some of the qualities of the BA set. Resolution is there, uh, a little bit of, 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 of cleanliness in that detail up top is, is still there. Not what a BA is capable of doing, or I, I, I have to say that, but it's still there. As compared to then these, these uh, other IMs that I've selected, I mean, the differences are noticeable, but um, I can't say that the V11 is bad or worse or better. It's just noticeable. Compared with the CVJ, uh, the bass here is substantially better, although this has also got very good bass. The bass here has got just, it's got that extra little bit more quality, cleanliness, impact that I don't get on the CVJ. It's not a dramatic difference, but it's better. There's, there's a better quality bass here than over here. What you do notice straight away here as compared to there is, the, is that there is, a BA, there is that BA tonality, that metallicness in the sound, which especially when you start cranking the volume, it can become more evident and it can become a little bit fatiguing. While over here, what actually happens is when you actually crank the volume, it actually opens up the sound of the V11 and a lot of that excess that you were having until that point kind of gets toned down and you start having a somewhat of a balance in the, in the sound. Still much, very much prominent in the bass, but the mids and the highs actually come up in a very nice manner, and they start accompanying to a certain extent the you know the the, the 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 bass quantity that you have. So this scales very nicely because it's not really the bass that increases; it's more the mids in the tr in the treble that increase in their intensity and in their presence. While over here, uh, the bass again doesn't increase that much, but the mids in the treble increase way too much, and they become a little bit too much, uh, too energetic. Uh, yes, at lower volumes, this is more detailed, uh, better better resolution, better detailed retrieval, better soundstage, but at higher volumes, um, you know, I would actually say that the V11, even with its faults, comes out on top. Um, orchestra light, uh, very detailed in the mids and in the highs, unquestionable, but thin sounding in the bass. Although it's still using, although it's also, also using the 32955s like over there, they've just been tuned in a very tame manner. So, um, they are complete opposites. They would be a good complement to each other, let's put it that way. Great mids and great treble here, without the crazy amount of bass, great bass, 
eight base and great lower mids with the upper mids and the treble not being ca capable of keeping up until you reach a certain volume when you reach a certain volume it's actually capable of keeping up so there's no real winner or loser here they're just way too different to be compared to each other and then finally the l8s is is a is a curious one because L8S yes, when I reviewed it I mentioned it actually reminded me of the Neon Pro and I stand by that it reminds me of a Neon Pro it's basically a Aul Audio Neon Pro at half the price okay this the the the, the minor defects that it has uh, are more than compensated by the fact that you're paying half the value because it shares the majority of the same BAs as the Neon Pro uh, it is tuned very similar to the Neon Pro let's be honest and I'll show you the graphs in a second and you'll see what I mean. Uh, just maybe a little bit less polished that's all um, and compared here to the to the um, v11 it offers that extra bit of, of mids and treble that is missing here the base is very similar uh, but it offers that m those mids and treble that you're missing here especially at the lower volumes when you, again you crank up the volume um, the difference becomes minimal because this scales better this increases the intensity of the, the energy present in the mids upper mids and treble in a in a manner where <coughs> at high volume it's at, it's where you want it to be let's put it that way while that one it reaches a point where it starts becoming just too loud it's not aggressive it's not a it's not um it's not um uh, sibilant or anything it's just too loud so you you end up wanting to turn it down while over here you can sustain a higher volume level for a longer period of time okay please keep in mind that will damage your ears but hey to each its own uh I'm, I'm a firm believer of, you, you know, you've been warned, you know what can happen, then you do what decided, you, you decide what you want to do, it's up to you. Um, so in conclusion, what can I say? Uh, the V11 is for those that will like to listen to music loud, one, want an OBA set, two, uh, like the tonality of the Sonians in the bass, three, um, and are not particularly concerned with the with the IM being a detail monster. Four, those are the four things that this IM uh, is good at, and that a person looking for those things should consider this. Compared here to the others, it's like I said. Uh, I mean, CVJ uh, has got uh, uh, really nice performance at lower volumes. That is, it's just that you notice overall that this is BAs over here playing. Uh, which over here you don't notice it as much. It's way more polished, way more, way more. It's just more polished, okay? Orchestra light is fantastic in the mids and the and the and the highs, just thin in the bass, and that was its main problem. It wasn't really the BA timbre or anything of the sort. It was just thin in the bass. The L8S, I think it's a fantastic IM. Honestly, I think it's an amazing IM, uh, very much underrated. Um, it, it went under the radar completely. Um, I guess to a certain extent that's the fault of the actual brand. The brand should try to to uh, promote itself a little bit better. Um, and compared here to the to the to the V11, uh, it's a V11 with more detail. So um, ultimately, I guess a more competent sounding IM, if you wanted to, if you want to put it that way. All right. Um, anyway, guys, I'll show you now the the. Uh, graphs and so that you can see what what they all graph like next to each other and we'll wrap it up all right you take care now bye bye hi guys and welcome now to the graph section for the ivpiq v11 uh as you can see and what i mentioned already in the, in the in the beginning of the review i mean in terms of mids upper mids and treble this is uh, very nice very very nice the problem is that you have a 10 db so this is 70 to 80 we have a 10 db of bass boost while you have only around a five five and a half db of mid boost and obviously this bass is, is is quite significant i mean for you to have an idea of what i'm talking about um and let's not forget the, the balance between the two okay this is the penon turbo sorry the penon turbo with the bass fully on okay so also crazy amounts of bass uh, normalized at 500 hertz but it's got more mids and more treble you know um, ultimately the balance kind of ends up being the same as on the IVPIQ even more because it's got more mid bass it 
it, it kind of gives you the same sound, okay? Perhaps even a little bit thicker. Uh, I would say that the IVPIQ still sounds more more competent with all this, you know, with, with all its shortcomings that it has. It still will sound slightly, maybe a little bit more competent than the Pinon Turbo. Uh, the balance of the Pinon Turbo, uh, we're talking about as well about a five dB difference between the mids and the high and the and the bass in terms of where that peaks and where that peaks, but it's just overwhelming so ultimately what i end up uh, or how i like end up using the turbo is in the in this following setting which just is the base switch on uh where everything is way more balanced you see now that the balance between the bass and the mids is is properly done um and i would say that the ivpiq sits uh, kind of in the same ballpark, it's kind of the same ballpark as the turbo, kind of. The turbo is still more detailed up top, it's still got more information, especially in the upper mids and in the treble, does, it does come across more. Um, in either case, be it the turbo or be it the, the IVPIQ, uh, more so even in the turbo, the mid bass is not as, 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 uh, as dramatically powerful as you think yeah it's got loads of mid bass yes but it's not this this drama that you think oh it's gonna be too much all right so that's the turbo um with the ivpiq and although i didn't use the turbo because it's way more expensive but i just wanted to show uh, you guys so that you can understand what sort of amounts of bass i'm talking about here okay now um the next am that i'm going to show you is the kumo all right again normalized 500 uh, and with the setting where I'm boosting the bass slightly. And you would think that the bass is kind of similar, and to a certain extent it is, because obviously the Kumo having more energy in the mids, upper mids and treble, it doesn't let the bass shine as much, but um, it just doesn't have that same kind of, um, how can I put it to you, I actually EQ'd the bass on the, um, uh, on the, uh, IVPIQ slightly down and it still maintains that that extra oomph okay that extra gut um, it's 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 kind of got that um, I mean that visceral impact okay it, it still maintains it okay um, but the biggest difference really isn't so much in the bass and so on it's just that you notice more that BA timbre in the mids and upper mids and treble on the CVJ as opposed to the the V11 Okay, the next one is the QE Ears Orchestra Light. Let me just change this to a color which is going to be more noticeable. Let me make it. Uh, let me make it. Uh, let me make it green. Okay, there we go. All right, um, the QE Ears. Um, a little bit more energetic in this area here, uh, as compared as compared to the the the, the IVPIQ um, and. The, the interesting thing here is that, yes, you, you notice straight away that the mids are superior. That's not, not, not even a debatable. But the bass, you would think that well, the bass isn't that different, but the bass sounds way thinner than what it actually graphs. Okay? Uh, again, it has to do with the balance, because if you look at the balance, we're talking about a, a gain into the bass of about 6, a gain to the, a gain to the, to the mids and the highs of about 9 dBs. Um, that difference, that, that 3 dB difference uh, is not exactly how I perceive it. It sounds more, well, it is definitely more mid-centric, okay? Um, and they're very opposite. They would be good complements to each other, all right? That's it. And then finally, the the Leisurely Audio L8S, uh, which you can see the bass is kind of on the similar ballpark, okay? Uh, and then obviously, of course, it's got more mids, more, more treble, so it does sound more open, more detailed. It's got a little bit extra energy. But what I would have liked IVPIQ to have done is give it a, a switch here that would bring this down. Something that would be along the lines of, for example, the Neon Pro. The Neon Pro, this is with the bass switch in the off position, okay? And this is with, this one now is with the bass switch on the on position. So you got a little extra boost of, boost of bass. If they could have done if they could have done the IVPIQ by adding a switch to just lower the bass slightly so that that balance between the bass and then the mids was obtained in a different form, um, I, I'm, I'm positive about what I'm saying. This would be an absolute monster of an IM because 
even uh, in terms of the sound stage and when you look at this section here you can you can have an idea of how good the sound stage is and the sound stage is if i actually bring this down if i if i equalize it down the sound stage is pretty good it does open up it's a pretty airy um, sounding iem but because of the way it is you don't perceive the sound stage as what it has the abilities to be okay uh, you don't and so technically it's it's a little bit uh, not on its uh, not allowing to showcase its potential not because this is being done badly and then you put another you put an excessive amount of bass to compensate on and to uh, camouflage what is being done uh, in a manner which is not the ideal form in terms of the mids but no the mids and the treble and and that's all fine it's that it's just got a lot of bass uh, and those sonians are absolute beasts so this year should have been slightly less maybe who knows ivpiq will consider what i'm saying and they will uh, in, in the next uh, itineration uh, bring this level down just slightly just a switch i mean honestly it is i think it's not a difficult thing to implement a switch to bring the bass down 3 dbs and the, the v11 will become a beast of an iam okay anyway guys as always like and subscribe any questions that you might have please feel free to ask me and i'll do my best to answer thank you take care bye bye